Good morning. I've got a stack of audiobooks here, and I think I'll just get started. There's the first one. It's The Rise of Endymion. I think that's how it's pronounced, by Dan Simmons. It's got a very cool-looking cover on it with the Shrike. Uh, it's read by Victor Bevine, or Bevine. And um, I think this is book three in that, uh, that series. I've read the first one. And uh, I quite liked it. It's called uh, Hyperion. We did a show about it. And, um, and then I think the second one is called The Fall of Hyperion. And then the third one here is The Rise of Endymion. I think that's how it's pronounced. It's 25 CDs, 30 hours, and 20 minutes. But check out the size of this thing. Massive. Now, I think this is probably not designed to be a library case, just because it's mostly plastic, so I'm not sure how much ab abuse it could take, but um, on that size, it's uh, a little more dangerous than on one like this, a little one. Uh, this is Day by Day Armageddon by J.L. Bourne, which is a zombie book, I believe. It's read by Jay Snyder, or performed by Jay Snyder. And it's uh, six CDs, six hours, 42 minutes. So that's relatively short. I'm not sure if this is a series or not, but um, it's probably the first of a series if it is one. It's a little bit easier to manage when it's just a few, although it looks like this one's just come out. It snaps back into place. It's not too bad. It's a very manageable size. I can probably finish this in a couple of days. Zombie book. Day by day, Armageddon. Now this one I am very much looking forward to getting to. It's uh, Roger Zelazny, again read by Victor Bevine. And it's This Immortal, which is a uh, one of Zelazny's more famous books that I, I believe is not in any of uh, his Amber series or anything else like that. Um, six hours, 29 minutes. And I think this is going to have to go to the top of my listening stack. 1966. Very nice. Also from Brilliance, all of these are from Brilliance, The Unincorporated War. Now, uh, this is the second book in a, what I think is now a three-book series could be wrong about that, but um, Danny Colon and Ethan Colon are the uh, authors. I believe they're brothers. And the first book in this series won uh, the Prometheus Award, I believe it's called, which is a libertarian science fiction award. Uh, I found the first book to be very interesting. Um, it's a little. It was a little long for the material. I think it could have been cut down, but... Uh, we found, I think we did a show on it, and it was, it was a very fruitful discussion. Lots of uh, good idea SF in this book. Uh, sorry, the first book in the series. I, I don't know about the unincorporated work, because I haven't heard it yet. Read by Eric G. Dove. Nineteen CDs. There it is. Now this is actually one that I know was an Audible Frontiers title. It was one of the first uh, big Audible Frontiers finds. And it's a Lankmar book, Swords and Deviltry, uh, by Fritz Leiber. Fritz Leiber. It's read by Jonathan Davis. And um, I'm not sure how well these translate to, to audio, because it's very dense. But with the density... At least we don't have to wade through it for too long. It's only seven hours. It should be fairly easy to listen at that length. Um, and I do believe it's an excellent book. Um, it's been a long time since I read it, but it got me thinking, and I had a look, and I found a copy of this, which is uh, The Fafford and Grey Mauser adaptation to comics, which I think worked masterfully. It's uh, Mike Mignola as the artist, uh, Howard Chaikin I think is the, uh, the writer, I'm not 100% not sure about that, but if you, if you bear with me for a second you'll see inside it's just gorgeous. 
Gorgeous art. Look at that. Yeah, Howard Chaikin is the adapter. Mike Minola is pencils, and um, it it works extraordinarily well as a as a comic book. Oh yeah, I could just sit down and reread this right again. I love the Fafford and Gray Marzer series when I first found it, um, and uh, it, it's kind of very uh, episodic, so it works really well as a comic book. Um, Lankmar is a fascinating setting, and I really like the idea of a of a fantasy that is not set in the countryside. <laughs> I like the urban. I'm going to have to sit down and read that again. Now, while I'm on comics, let's look at a couple new ones that have just arrived. Um, this is actually the second book in uh, the adaptations of Parker novels. It's called The Outfit. It's actually the adaptation of the third, I believe it's the third, yeah, it's the third uh, Richard Stark novel, called also called The Outfit. And the first one uh, was um, The Hunter. And I've read that already, and I quite liked it. Um, the adaptation, I think, is um, probably going to be better this time, just because it's a better novel. I'm not a big fan of The Hunter, but this actually first came out as a hardcover. As you can see, it's, it's not just a trade paperback. It's not just a series of comics collected. It was originally designed to be a uh, hardcover like this. And the art is, is duotone, I think it's called. Paper's kind of cream colored. And it's got um, a high uh, word count. This is not a at all action oriented comic, even though, oh, look at that. Even though it is really about uh, the books. It's very closely adapted from the books. And the books are really just excellent excellent books and the outfit is actually an excellent uh, novel in the series um, revenge story as as you might expect from the Parker series well this looks interesting a lot of different in interior art here I'm not familiar with this is this a different artist I don't know I'll have to find out I'm gonna have to sit down and look at this soon too Okay, I should move on to the next thing. The final thing. This is actually perhaps the most unusual comic I've ever received. It's an adaptation of Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. Um, <laughs> from the cover art, it looks like it's a, sort of a cartoonish, I guess. But I, I, I love the size. This is a Marvel book. It's a little bit small. Uh, smaller than a normal comic, but it's got a good binding, so I think I could just sit down and read read through this um, in a relatively short period of time. Lots of word balloons, of course, because it's it's based on a uh, a novel with lots of description, a lot less action, a lot more uh, uh, character interaction. But <laughs> it's got a sort of a manga look to it there, doesn't it? Oh boy, this looks really good too. I think I'm going to have to get started. Thanks very much.